Hello everyone and welcome to another scrapbook layout process video for my 2023 family album. If you haven't caught any of the videos that I've done previously, I've decided to do the album this year in an 8.5 by 11 format. And now that the creative design team have published their 8.5 by 11 sketchbook, I'm going to be using some sketches from this book to help me get this process done a little bit quicker. The photos that I'm going to do today are all photos of walks that I've done with my daughter while I was down visiting my parents. And the reason why we went is because my mother needed a new phone. And these are the photos that I have from that trip that we did down there. And I really only have one photo of my mum. So what I'm going to do in this layout is create a little pocket with the story behind that. So stay tuned so you can see how I work that into the layout. And the rest of my photos are all outdoor photos where I went for walks with my daughter. So these are going to be on the double page spread. And then I'm going to tell the story on this strip here because this doesn't quite go with the rest of the nature photos. So they're gonna be at the foreground. And then the story is gonna be on this little slider, which I'll be able to write everything down on the front and the back of this. So let me show you the sketch that I'm working with today and the papers that I've chosen. The sketch is on page eight of the book and the papers that I've chosen I have previously used on 12 by 12 layouts but I really wanted to use the change of scenery papers for this layout today and I was thinking that I was going to use this paper here and then cut it into a circle but when I put my photos on here but even though I have ones that that are out in paddocks and gorgeous big trees and everything, it did not quite work with this busy pattern paper. So I think what I'm going to do, I've only got one sheet of this one left and the other side of this is a black and white tone or a gray and white tone. I think what I'm gonna do is use this burlap print here. So the process that I normally do when I'm looking at pattern papers is I bring them in, I've usually got a piece of white daisy and I've got a piece of shortbread here because I think that might work as well. And I really feel like the photos pop when they're on this pattern paper. All of these colors in these photos and the neutral tones in the bark of this tree and also this little pier here all lend themselves quite well to this pattern paper. So you can see the sketch here has a big circle. We have got other florals and everything. They're there as a suggestion for embellishments. It does not have to be florals. And I'm not using florals in this page at all but I did like how this worked and I'm just going to keep this off to the side so I can reference it. I've gone ahead and I've cut my base layers. So this one I've actually adhered. So this is eight and a half by 11 for my book and then I've got my white daisy on top. This one I haven't adhered yet because I know that I want to put a little slider element in here to be able to pull that out and this is going to go over top so this will just slide in and out they are top loading page protectors so it will be easy to pull this out and I think what I can do with this I'm just putting this in the center before I cut it into a circle is follow the sketch and lay out my photos I'm not quite following the actual design. You can see here, I'll just bring this in for reference. This has a six by four photo and then a four by three photo off to the side, but I had two big landscape photos that didn't quite work with that orientation. And I do my printing at home. So I've printed these at a six inch width but they are not quite four inches in height, they're three and a half. And because I print at home, I can size that to suit my page and my own needs. So I've got a photo up here. This is a walk up the creek and everything. There's a gorgeous boardwalk to walk along. This photo was originally on the sketch this way, but that didn't work with the orientation. So I think this is going to go here and I've got another one to put here. So I quite like the placement of these and it still keeps this sort of grouping here, but this side is a little bit different and it's okay to manipulate things to suit your own photos and the orientations that work best with your photos. So I'm gonna go away and I'm going to cut a nice big circle on my Cricut and then I'll be back to start putting everything together. I've cut my circle on the Cricut and then I've cut it in half. So that is gonna go right in the middle 
So I'll just quickly adhere that down. And you can see the other side of this pattern is this pine stripe. But I'm just going to center this on my page. So with my Versamat, I find this really, really helpful to be able to give exact measurements so I know that everything is going to be in the center. And I'm putting my circle right up against the inside edge. Now I can't adhere this one quite yet because I want to make sure that I leave a pocket for this one to slide. I'm actually going to put a little bit of foam tape around this section. Now I still have some 2D foam tape but I'm just gauging how far in I need to go to make sure that the white daisy piece that I put on top of this is going to adhere properly. So I'm being quite generous down this side. I'm going to just cut that off and then this is going to need a stopper. Now I've cut a little tab from the Tabs Thin Cuts. You can see there's a whole variety of these. These are currently available in the Core Catalogue and when they cut you get a little score line. I don't know if you can see that. I'll just bend this a little bit which makes it easy to fold exactly in half and there's all different sizes in this. So I've picked the one that is going to fit the top of this little mechanism that I'm going to use to hide my journaling. I've picked the one that will fit perfectly on that and I'm just going to run a little bit of glue along the top edge and if it comes out in a little bit of a blob you can spread it out a little bit with an offcut piece of paper. So it's quite warm in this room tonight. I've got the heater running and I find that when it's warm in the room, glue seems to just run that much more freely. So I'm spreading that out a bit and then I'm lining this up to go over top of that area. And then I can flip this over and put a little bit more. This time I'm just gonna dab off a little bit before I put it down on my cardstock and then this can just adhere behind there. So that gives me my little pull tab and I'm going to be able to stamp pull on this so people know to pull that up. And I'm thinking, I'm just gonna put this over top just to check how far I want this to show. Now remember the memory protector is a top loading one. So I can have that down there like that and this bit will just pop out of the top of the memory protector so people know that they can pull that out. And that way I can put a little bit of foam tape at the bottom of this to act like a stopper. And that will stop it sliding all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm gonna run my foam tape down along this edge as well to make like a channel. Now I am being generous with the foam tape because I want it to slide in and out without catching. If I had done this in little sections of tape and just done it intermittently, this could get stuck on the way in and out. So I want this to be quite smooth so it's guided quite well. But as for the rest of the page, I don't need to use quite that much foam tape for it. So I've got enough foam tape on there, but before I stick this down, I think what I might like to do is some stamping on this page. So I'm not going to adhere this at the moment because if I try and stamp on this, I might catch a little bit where I've got different levels. And I want my stamping to have a nice firm surface underneath it, not a lumpy bumpy one. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of a dry fit here. I'm going to bring in this semicircle and these two photos here. So this was the last part of our day we were driving home. So we made a little detour and stopped. And I'm gonna bring in the Change of Scenery stamp set. This isn't available, the special ran out, but it may reappear back onto the website if we haven't sold out of it. Sometimes old specials do appear in online only. So just keep an eye out. It's a really gorgeous set. So it may come back if it hasn't sold out. But I'm thinking I might like like to stamp change of scenery along this section here. So I'm going to move my photos
And this is something that you shouldn't do with your photos. I've put this stamp set on top of this photo and as I'm taking this off, it's taking the surface. You can see and this is a big mistake. I'll have to print this one again, but I'll just continue with the video for now and know that I will replace that photo. So all my lining up, I really should have done it with a pencil rather than putting that entire carrier sheet over top for the stickiness of these stamps to adhere to my photo. I haven't used all the stamp sets in this pack, so they've still got the processing stickiness on there. I haven't seasoned all of them, and that's what's happened with this. So I'm just gonna put this here, and I've mounted it onto a block. So what I'm going to do is just put that there for the moment, take everything away, bring that over, and I'm just going to get a pencil so that I know that I want to stamp it below this line here. And I'm thinking I'm going to keep it fairly tone on tone and do the stamping in shortbread. So you can see this is what I mean by seasoning. Stamps are quite sticky when they've just been produced and they haven't been used before. So you want to take that off a little bit before you do your stamping so you get a nice clean stamp and proper ink transfer. I'm going to turn this over, bring in my shortbread ink. I've got some scrap paper here that I am just going to do some practice stamping with it first. So make sure it's all nicely inked up. And just stamp it off a couple of times. And this also helps me see if I put these pieces back together, if I like that colour with my photos or if I want to do something a little bit stronger and I think I might bring in toffee to see what that looks like. So I've got my toffee ink and stamp that up. I just think it needs to be a little bit stronger and I do quite like that. So I'm going to go with toffee and that's stamping quite well now. So I'm just going to bring in my piece of white daisy and do the stamping directly onto the page. Now, if anything goes wrong when you're stamping directly onto a page, all you need to do is then stamp it onto another piece of cardstock and then maybe put a little mat around it of a contrasting color. So I'm stamping this on white. I could mat it with shortbread if it doesn't work and then use that like an element on my page and nobody will know that you've messed up the stamping underneath. So I'm pushing that down. I'm giving it plenty of time to adhere. I want the ink to absorb into the paper and I'm really happy with how that looks. And now I can get on with putting my piece of white daisy onto this page. I'm just gonna rub out my pencil line and take all the foam tape off and adhere that to the page. So I'll be back once I've done that. I've gone ahead and I've adhered this part of the circle to complete the design across the two pages. I reprinted my photo. So, and that's a lesson learned, not to put a stamp set down on top of a photo, but I've been able to do a quick reprint of that. And that's why I love having my printer at home now. And even though this side has popped up onto foam tape, you really can't tell across the double page spread. And of course there will be the binder rings that'll go in between. So I really didn't need to put foam tape on this side at all. This is where all my journaling is going to go and sometimes I quite like having the journaling hidden on pages especially when I've got beautiful landscape photos so I do quite like how that looks and I went ahead and I stamped pull on the top of this so that someone who's looking at this will know that there is something to look at underneath this tab. And that's from a very old retired stamp set called Border Tab. These came out for an interactive special that we did and I've held on to it. You could use a small alphabet set or you could just write that on there with a Le Pen journaling pen. But this will quite easily fit within this little channel now that I've created. And now it's quite easy to pull in and out of 
there and the journaling that I have to say quite a bit about this visit that my daughter and I did down to my parents place I'll be able to put all of that on there no worries at all because I'll be able to use both sides now I am going to do some more stamping on my page and I've also got some stickers that I want to pull off this sticker sheet and I've got the coordinating die cut pieces as well so I'm going to play around with that a little bit I think what I want to do is stamp a couple more of these things onto this page I thought some views are worth every step this was a walk that we did that we went up to the top of the bluff so that we could look down over the inlet so I thought that would work quite well there I'm going to turn my mat over and stamp that on and to keep it consistent I'm going to use toffee ink again and season my stamp and I want to test this out as well to make sure that it's going to stamp really nicely you can see it's a little bit blotchy here so sometimes it just takes a couple of times to stamp off. You want to make sure that you get rid of any ink around the surrounds of the stamp set so that you don't transfer that onto your page. And I think I'm right to go now. So that's just going to nestle in amongst these photos here. I think that will fit quite nicely. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use it, but I'm going to stamp it anyway so that I can have a little play around with positioning. Slowing down has its perks. I always find that when I'm down at the beach or walking along beach trails or paths, that there is such a great sense of relaxation. So I'm just going through my little bits of white paper that I keep. And I'm going to do this in toffee ink as well. I love when stamps have a solid background and the text itself shows the paper that's underneath. So it's a really great way of getting a white print. Now this isn't quite stamping quite as well as I would like it to. So I'm just going to peel this off and reattach it to my block. Sometimes you need to walk your stamp all the way over the ink pad rather than just stamping in the middle all the time. I'm going to just line this up, hopefully not get my head in the way. And the good thing about stamping onto a piece of cardstock, if it doesn't quite turn out right, I can turn this over and stamp it again. So I'm quite happy with how that looks. And I'm going to just trim this out with my scissors. So I've got my left and right page now. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that. Actually, I might put that there. And I've got a sticker, loving this view. So I'm just going to dry fit some of this. I have already pressed out some of the die cuts that are in the kit and I'm going to scatter a few of those around. Another wood one there that brings the wood across and gives a little bit of that wood grain type finish over on this side which matches in really well with this pattern paper. And I do love these little geotags that come in this set. So they look pretty good. And I've just found another little heart and I think that might work well nestled in here with that little sentiment strip there. So now I'm going to have a look at these stickers. I know I want to use this one because I think this works really well with this page. I'm just going to commit and put that straight in. And then I'm going to write, this was in a different location, as I said before, on the way home. So I'll just put that location in there. And put a sticker here. The arrow pointing in. I don't think I need to use this other arrow but I think I'd like to add this little sun here. I'm going to put that coming out the top of here and I might just push that down a little bit further. That's quite a nice little accent to have coming out of that photo and then I'll just check the rest of this. My happy place all smiles. I think I've got enough word art going on the page here. So I'm just going to set that aside, adhere these pieces down and I think I'm going to pop this one up onto some foam tape to give it a little bit of height. And I want one more little wood grain die cut heart so I'm just going to press this out and apply this up here. I'm going to try and stretch this last little bit of foam tape for this sentiment. So the good thing about the foam tape, even if it is the widest strip, you can cut little segments of it 
across like this just to make it stretch that a little bit more it's a bit too wide in the width that one to adhere direct to this little banner piece but just four little strips of that will do and then I think I'm going to call this page done all I need to do is add in my journaling this is one of my May pages I've actually got I've actually got another double page spread for May, but it's all Mother's Day photos with my family in it. So I haven't put the assembly of that one on camera, but the previous page to this, because this was at the end of May, the previous page to this, I will bring in the Havana alphabet and I will stamp May on there. And I'm going to follow the same sketch for that May page because I quite like this design and it will mean that my photos for May will have a little bit of cohesiveness as there'll be a double page spread before this and then this one and it will keep them together I think having the same sort of design with this circle element in the middle. I really am enjoying doing my 2023 Family Memories album in this size and I've nearly caught up with this project now. I do have the May pages to do that go before this and then I'll be ready for when June finishes to do my June photos so I'll be doing one a month in the future or if I have too many photos from a busy month I will spread them out over a couple of double page spreads rather than just trying to fit all my photos onto one double page spread for this. Thank you so much for tuning in, leaving your likes and comments is always very much appreciated and if you haven't done so already I'd love it if you would hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. As always happy crafting, hope to see you next time, bye for now.